Welcome to the lecture of Shapley values for local explanations. So after discussing the Shapley values in game theory, we want to now apply the Shapley values to machine learning. And for that, we will see model predictions as a cooperative game and transfer the Shapley value concept from game theory to machine learning. So remember in, in the game theory Shapley values, we had those players and now we will use the features. So let's say we have the features age, wage and smoking and we'll use the features as players. And we will treat the predictive model as our game. And then we got a predicted target actually for a single observation as we will see and we will treat that as the payout in the game. So the different features interact in the predictive model and that leads to a prediction. And we have seen in the game theory part that if features do interact, the calculation of Shapley values is not straightforward. So we have a model which gives us a prediction based on all features for a single observation X. And each feature is treated as a player. So we have feature XJ and we have P different features and they cooperate to produce a prediction. But the problem is in the prediction model, we cannot just leave a feature out in the prediction. So we have to find a solution for leaving out a feature if it's not in the coalition. And we can do that by the partial dependence function. So the idea is that we have our coalition XS, so the features in the coalition, and we have minus S, so that's the features not in the coalition, and we, we remove them by marginalizing over minus S. So we could say we integrate them out, but we'll see later in more detail how that could work. And we had this value function or payout of a coalition for an observation X. And now we, oh, that value function is our prediction of the observation X, but we subtract the mean prediction. So we actually center the prediction. And the reason for that is if we take the empty coalition, so we would have the value function of the empty set. And that would actually be the um, now the prediction of that is exactly the expected value of f because we marginalize out all features and that exactly gives us the average prediction or the expected value. And if we now have the same again, we can just say it's zero and that leads us to the, um, what we need in the Shapley values that the value function for the empty coalition is zero. So, we again use that concept of marginal contributions. So we have our um, coalition S and we add the feature of interest J or we don't add it. And the difference between the, those two is the marginal contribution. And if we do that on the prediction level, we'll get the prediction where feature J is in the coalition here on the left and the one where it's not and the expected value just cancels out because we have this term in both value functions. So to define the Shapley value in the machine learning context, we have the Shapley value phi j. So that's the Shapley value for feature j of an observation x. And 
We do that by that order definition, which we had in the game theory part. So phi j of x, a Shapley value for feature j of observation x is now the um, sum over all possible possible orderings. And actually it's the average of all possible orderings. That's why we divide by the number of possible orderings and now the marginal distribution. And here we take the prediction of the coalition, including the feature of interest and the coalition, and uh, the prediction of the coalition not including it. So that's about the same as in the game theory Shapley values. So the interpretation is that feature xj contributed its value of the Shapley value to the difference between the prediction and the average prediction. That also means that the marginal contributions and the Shapley values can be negative. So a prediction for an observation could, uh, could be less than the average. And then um, some of the Shapley values has, have to be negative. So for the exact computation, we can now take the partial dependence function for any set of features. So we take that formula from above um, where we had this term and we had this sum. And now if we include this partial dependence function there, we get a second sum. And so we have now a double sum. So we have the prediction including feature j and we have the prediction not including feature j and we average that over all orderings and over all observations. So we also have to divide by the number of observations. And you can already guess that this double sum will be quite computational. And um, here the prediction marginalizes over the features minus s using all observations. So that's the idea of the partial dependence function. As I've said, the, the exact Shapley value computation is quite problematic for high-dimensional feature spaces. So even if only if we only have 10 features, we end up with 3.6 million possible orderings. So it quite quickly gets infeasible to calculate. And an additional problem is that um, we averaging over the entire data set. So remember, we had here the second sum over all observations um, can also be very expensive for large data sets. But we have a solution for both problems and that's sampling. So instead of averaging over all possible orderings and all observations, we just sample M random orderings to build the coalitions. And we also have a solution for the N terms. Let's see that. And M here is then a trade-off between accuracy of the Shapley values and the computational cost. So the higher M, the closer we are to the exact Shapley values, but the more costly is the computation. So how do we do that? Let's um, describe the approximation algorithm in detail. So we want to approximate the Shapley value phi j for observation x of a model f hat which was fitted on data D and we use sampling and do M samples. So for each of our capital M samples, we select a random order of feature indices. So for example, if we would have four features, the ordering could look like this. And if we are now interested in feature one, then we would, oh, that's actually the next point. So again, we have four, two, one, three. And now we want to find the set of features before feature J in that order. So this is J, this is S, and this is minus S. And we just sample one random ordering and one iteration of the approximation algorithm. And we select one random data point from the whole data set. 
And now we construct two artificial observations by replacing the feature values from X with that random data point Z. So the first one, we have here our feature of interest. So what we have here S, here J, and here minus S. And important is that our feature J is in the first part where it's an X. So here we don't replace the feature values. And here on the right for minus S, we replace the feature values just by the um, by that one data point Z. And we do this a second time, but now here's again S, here's J, and here is minus S. So no change for S, no change for minus S, but for J, so for our feature of interest, we now replace it. So in the first step, we didn't replace it. Second play, uh, step, we do replace it. So, um, and we can use this as in the first step here, J is included in the coalition. And in the second step, J is not included in the coalition. That's why we call it plus J and minus J. And now we just compute the difference of the two because this is an approximation to the, um, to the prediction where the um, feature J is included or not included. And that's the definition of the Shapley value. And we call this phi J M because it's the Shapley value of the M iteration uh, algorithm uh, approximation iteration. So that means that our prediction not including J is approximated by that minus J and that prediction including J is approximated by that plus J function. And we do that over M iterations. So we do that for all the capital M observations and we just average the Shapley values. And you can imagine that because you just take one random data point, there might be, this might be quite unstable. But if you select a large enough M, then by this averaging in the end, you will not only um, stabilize that um, sampling of the orderings, but also the sampling of the random data points. So M shouldn't be too small here. So in, in an illustration, we have our observation of interest and we want to calculate the Shapley value for feature J. So we um, take our F hat plus J. So that's the one where the feature values are included in the coalition. And we take the minus J where the feature J is not included in the coalition. We take the difference, so the marginal contribution, and we average over all M orderings. So to um, show that here in an example, we could say we have temperature and humidity, so in the bike sharing data, and these are in our coalition. And we have wind speed, which is not in our coalition. And we have year, which is our feature of interest. So for all the computations we leave, uh, for at least for this um, coalition, we leave temperature and humidity unchanged. And we always replace the features in minus S, so wind speed, by a random observation. But once we also replace the year feature and once we don't. So meaning that in this plus J feature J is included in the um, coalition where we don't replace and for minus J it's, we do replace it. And now we take the difference of those two. So the marginal contribution and um, see here, we get the prediction. So count is the target in the data set. And 
we get the difference between these two predictions and that's our marginal contribution. So the interpretation is that the feature year contributes plus 700 bike rentals if it joins this coalition. And we do this calculation then several times for different um, orderings of the features and um, for a different randomly sampled data point Z. And yeah, and we average over all those samples. So we compute the marginal contribution of feature J towards the prediction across all randomly drawn feature coalitions. We average all these M marginal contributions of feature J. And the Shapley value is now the payout of the feature J. So how much feature year contributed to the overall prediction and bicycle counts for a specific observation. And then we get that Shapley value. So that just gave us the Shapley value for one single observation because it's a local method. So let's revisit the axioms for the fair attribution. So we had efficiency, meaning that the Shapley values add up to the centered prediction. So in the game theory, that was that the Shapley values add up to the total payout. And here, remember that in the value function V of S, we had that centered prediction, meaning that we subtract the expectation. So if we sum up all the shape values, we will get the um, prediction for that single observation X minus the expected value, so the average prediction. We have symmetry. So two features J and K that contribute the same to the prediction get the same payout. So that means that interaction effects between features are fairly divided. So if we have here a prediction of a coalition where including feature J, and if that is always the same as the same coalition including feature K, then, and so that's for all possible orderings, then the two Shapley values are the same. And we have dummy null player. So a Shapley value of a feature that does not influence the prediction is zero. So if a feature was not selected by model, so we could have that in tree-based models or in penalized regression like Lasso, for example, where the coefficients then are shrink to zero, then its Shapley value is zero. So if we have um, here the coalition S and if we add J and it's the same as if we won't add feature J and this for all possible coalitions, then Shapley value zero. And we have additivity. So for prediction with combined payouts, the payout is the sum of payouts. Remember that from game theory. And that's quite nice in the machine learning context because if we have model and ensembles such as boosting or bagging, so random forest, for example, then we can easily combine the Shapley values from the different base learners. <coughs> so Let's look at an example. We have again the bike sharing data and we have one observation here with these values. So that observation has a temperature of 28.5 degrees Celsius. So it's quite warm in summer and July, <coughs> good weather. And that's a working day and it's in the year 2011. And we see that the average prediction is 4,500 and that observation gets a slightly lower prediction. So the difference of the two is 73. So minus 73. And um, if we now look at the single values, then we see that the temperature drives up the prediction. So if it's warm, more bikes are rented. That makes sense. Also in summer and um, good weather also drives it up. Um, 
And we see that working day, for example, doesn't have a big influence. But in the bike sharing data, there's a general trend that later in, in, in time, more bikes are rented. And year 2011 is quite early in the observations. And that's why the year drives down the prediction. And that's also why the um, average, why the prediction for that observation is lower than the average. So if we would have a similar day with good weather and summer and all that, it would probably be above average. But because it's in the very beginning of the observations, it's actually slightly below average. So we can see which features give a positive attribution and which gives a negative attribution. And we see that the feature value temperature has the most positive effect, the contribution of about 400. So because of the weather, there are 400 more bikes rented than on average. But because of the year, there are about 400 less bikes rented than on average. So compared to other IML methods, Shapley values have the advantages that they have quite a solid theoretical foundation in game theory. So that helps in research and developing new methods, but it's also nice for interpretation. The prediction is fairly, fairly distributed among the feature values. So that's quite easy to interpret for a user. You get a single observation and you can see which features do have which part in the prediction. And you have a con contrastive explanation, so you always compare with the average, which also helps, helps with interpretation. But the disadvantages are that without, with, without sampling, Sheffield rays are quite computational. So it's for a little bit larger data sets usually infeasible to calculate the exact solutions with some exceptions. And if you do sampling, then it might get a little bit unstable um, if you don't have enough samples. And like many other IML methods, Shapley suffer from the inclusion of unrealistic data observations when features are correlated. So this is the extrapolation issue, which we also had, for example, in feature effects and feature importance lectures. <clears throat> 